Well, uh, time is money and money is time. And um, you know, it takes a fair amount of resources to run statewide, uh, and therefore that's what we're doing. And you got to start early. Let people know what you're doing. If you let them know what you're doing, they're going to make a decision one way or the other. If you're just kind of, well, I'm not sure, they're not going to be helping you. Mm -hmm. And you know, Dewhurst, uh, well, uh, Kay Bailey's, uh, I'm leaving the Senate, followed by Dewhurst. I think you guys cornered him and basically said, yeah, that's what I'm going to do. That precipitated my uh, statement that I'd follow that man anywhere uh, since I followed him to the land office. And then after that, they, you know, Susan was uh, apparently, I don't know what Susan's doing. Uh, I know Todd is pretty serious about it. I'm not sure about Susan. Uh, I guess I just can tell you what I'm doing. And I'm running for lieutenant governor 2014. Mm -hmm. Actually, I'm running for lieutenant governor 2011. That's your point. I don't know if it's um, hubris, chutzpah, or hallucination, uh, but the problems she has are, uh, make her the most vulnerable. If there's any statewide Republican nominee that would be vulnerable, it would be Susan Combs. And you know, when you, when you have a leadership position, whether it's elective or appointed, you're responsible for what happens, even if you really didn't contribute to the good or the bad outcome. And that data breach uh, is pretty dramatic. Um, you know, that and the recent flip-flop on the pro-life, pro-choice issue, after 20 years of being uh, pro-choice, she's now pro-life. Uh, you know, the other question is, is she running for lieutenant governor? In a Texas Tribune interview, uh, she said, it's way too early to talk about another office, while at the same time, for several months prior to that time, she's going around raising money saying, I'm running for lieutenant governor. Uh, I don't think that's the transparency that she tries to be known for. Um, there's lots of issues there, and you know, they, they happen on her watch. Uh, uh, the impulsiveness on the F-1, uh, you know, making a commitment for the F-1, 25 million a year for 10 years, without going through the protocol of the city of Austin even agreeing to that's what they wanted to do. Um, you know, that's not a very, uh, I don't think that's somebody who's well-reasoned and thoughtful enough to lead the Senate. Todd's a good man. Uh, he'd be a good lieutenant governor, not quite as good as me. I will tell you that if you recall uh, well, you may not recall, I'm 65 years old. At the end of this term, I'll be 68. That would give me two terms as like Gov, you know, ending at 76. Uh, I wouldn't be running for anything else. I knew that would be my last office. And I think we really do need some bold, uh, fearless leadership at present. Somebody who's not concerned about their next office. And I'd be in the same position Bullock was. And, you know, I know all the stories about Bob Bullock uh, when he was, uh, you know, drinking and shooting up beer joints and all that stuff. And, uh, you know, I hear all the stories, but I knew him in the six years he was lieutenant governor. And he truly had only one interest, and that was doing what was best for Texas, whether it was Republican or Democrat. And he became even more conservative. He became more Republican as a Democrat uh, during that time. So I think I'm in the same position he, he was in 93 to 99 when I served with him in the Senate. And there's a lot of issues that we're not talking about. Uh, one major issue, and this is probably the time to talk about it, is water. Uh, with Republican primary, we're going to talk about immigration. We're going to talk about being groped or at the airport. We're going to talk about guns. We're going to talk about pro-life, pro-choice. And those things are important, and I have definitive positions on all of those. But we need to talk about water. We need to talk about education. We need to talk about how we can do this. And we need somebody who can also be capable of selling a viewpoint, even if that viewpoint is initially not popular or well received. And we have this uh, water plan and the creation of these groundwater districts, and those groundwater districts have no correlation to the aquifers. Uh, it's like if you were to plot those things on the same map, they're totally unrelated. So we've got this resource that's not being managed well. Uh, and we've created a system in these groundwater districts that are, you know, handicapped in the management of the resource because they're not related to the resource, i.e. The, the aquifers. So we need to talk about groundwater a great deal. I don't envision we're going to have a whole lot more uh, reservoirs. Uh, so groundwater is what we're going to have to start looking at. Along with conservation. Do we all need a, 
San Augustine Plantation, and I don't think we do. We've done a really good job in Texas of creating jobs. I mean, everybody knows that. That's part of the presidential campaign right now, and, and we have. But we need to focus on those jobs that allow people to buy a home, uh, you know, to move it up a notch, and move it up a notch with focus on community colleges and skill sets that uh, you don't get by a four-year degree. A uh, lot of emphasis on four-year degrees, and that's great, but uh, we need people with skills. And I think community colleges are a big part of the education uh, solution.